Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig from FlashGameU.com, and today I'm going to show you how to create dynamic buttons. This is uh, something that I always look to do in any sort of programming environment I'm working in, is to have a way to have buttons that look the same but have a different label on them and have it done very easily. Now you of course can use the component that comes with Flash 9, but uh, I like to make my own buttons. And one way to do that is to simply create a movie clip. Um, I'm going to call it dynamic button. You can use uh, a simple button. The problem with a simple button is that if you want to put a piece of text inside of it, you can't use ActionScript to access that piece of text and change it. So you'd be stuck with basically creating a button for each different button you want. So if menu bar with five buttons, you'd have to have five different ones. With a movie clip, you can create one movie clip and have it many times. I've got it on the stage here once, and I've just got it set uh, just to be jumped on the stage, set to button one as the name. And then what I do here in the script on the frame is I've got some code, a couple things here. This is the pretty typical code for any sort of button that you would create. Um, it doesn't really matter in ActionScript 3 if it's a movie clip or a simple button. You can assign an event listener, in this case a mouse click, and have it call a function. Here's the function, and it has to accept the event, but doesn't need to do anything with it, and it's just going to throw something in the output window. This is the same if we're using a simple button, using a component, uh, doing all sorts of different things. You would do this to create a button. What's different is this. I'm calling a function called setLabel, a function I've created, and I'm calling it with this uh, word in there, testing. So the label of that button should be testing. Sure enough, if I run the movie, if I test the movie, it shows testing there. Now, the way that is done is if we actually l look at the movie clip there, and look at the information about it, we see that it's called dynamic button, it's class dynamic button, export for action script, and that means it's going to look for dynamic button.as, which of course we have, we've created. Dynamic button.as does a bunch of different things. Um, it looks rather long here, but a lot of the stuff that has nothing to do with the label. What has to do with the label is the set label function right here. And all it's going to do is take a string and it's going to set visible label.txt to this label. Visible label is a dynamic text field I created inside of the, the dynamic button. Let's go take a look at that. Click on that. There's the inside the dynamic button. See, so it's got three frames here. On the first layer, actually la layer two, it's called, um, I've got a dynamic text field right here. And you can see a little better. And that's called visible label. So when I just put the word button in there, just as a placeholder. So that's what's being changed by set label. And that's all it is. And that's why I'm calling it uh, here in the main movie like that. So if I had a second button, I'd say button 2 dot set label is something else. So the disadvantage of using a movie clip instead of a simple button is we don't have all those nice rollover and uh, down states that we have with a simple button. But we can get some of those things back in a movie clip just with some simple action script. So let's take a look again inside of the movie clip here and we've actually got three frames. This second layer here actually has the, the this blue box. If I go to the second frame, I can see it's actually this olive box, and the third frame is actually a bright yellow box. So it's three different states for the button. I've actually labeled these here uh, normal for the first frame, over for the second frame, there'll be a rollover state, and down for our third frame, for the down state. And that's all we need to know from there. If we go into dynamicbutton.as, we see a bunch of different things that address that. Uh, for instance, uh, we add a bunch of listeners here. Um, we have on the mouse over event, we go, we execute the function rollover, then roll out for the mouse out, mouse click down for mouse down, mouse click up for mouse up. So we look at those functions, and we could see something simple. For instance. Uh, on rollover, we're going to either go to the down state or the over state. Now that's going to depend on whether this has been clicked before. Proper button behavior is that you click down on the button. Let me demonstrate. You you roll over the button and it changes the rollover state. You click down on the button and changes the down state. You click up and of course it goes back to the rollover state. If you move off, it goes back to the normal state. Now it behaves differently if you actually click down, it goes to the down state. You can move off and it's in the off state go back over, it goes back onto the down state because you haven't released the mouse yet. 
and then I'll release the mouse. So basically, when you roll over, it depends if you've already clicked down and you're still pressing down on your mouse or not. So we're going to take that into account by remembering if we're in the middle of a click. So on mouse click down, we're going to set click equals true and go to the down state. At that point, if they roll out, it'll go to normal. And if they roll back in, it'll go either to down if they've clicked or if they haven't clicked, over. So just the different ways a button work. If you look at any user interface and almost any OS, all the buttons work this way. And uh, this handles basically, these functions here handle all of the ways that the button can uh, operate. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't do any action if mouse click up is hit. That's left for that other event handler that we talked about that is there and would be there uh, in the main timeline. We'll look at it again. This part here. So basically we're using the mouse event click to handle that and what the button uh, class is handling is things like over, out, and uh, up and down. So they work well together. So back to the class here, we do a couple other things, uh, nothing big. We um, go ahead and use button mode and mouse children, we set them to true and false respectively. This makes the cursor change to a hand. That's all it really does. We set clicked equal to false to begin with, and we go ahead and uh, have the rest of these functions here. And that's all we really need. Now, as an example, we can basically place a second button on the stage there. We look to the properties for this. It's button one. We change this one. We make this one button two. We can go in and add this. Add something. Button two. Let's set it to uh, another button. And let's add the event listener to go to button two clicked. Button two clicked will do that instead. And when we run this, we see testing and another right there. There it goes for the next exclamation point. There it goes with an at symbol. So we can create a whole bunch of buttons. And, and of course you can also modify this to actually create the buttons on the fly by action script. But the idea here is to be able to visually lay things out before you uh, before you run an action script. Because if you're creating a visual interface, you probably want to lay all the pieces out, background, borders, and all that. So I'd like to be able to do that in an interface uh, uh, type of uh, application. So there you go. So I'm going to put this code up with the post here so you can see the, the class. Uh, actually, I'm just going to post a link and, and put the, the two files up in a zip file. And uh, so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, so this has been Gary Rosenzweig with FlashGameU.com with how to create very simple but useful dynamic buttons. Thanks.